All right, hello and welcome back to the Basic Bible Podcast. I'm your host, Kevin Thompson. And joining us again uh, on the podcast is evangelist Scott Pauley. Scott, welcome back. Thank you, Kevin. Great to be back with you. You know, I was actually just thinking about you a little bit. Um, as I was <laughs> this past year at school, we've been going through an Old Testament survey. And a lot of my notes were your notes I took in your class uh, <laughs> many years ago. And so some of those quotes sprinkle out throughout my PowerPoints and whatnot. And well, I'm sure <laughs> someone else. And so what that means is uh, we're both fulfilling what Pastor Sexton tried to teach us, of able to teach each other's also, you know. Yes, so. exactly. Yeah. And uh, there is another generation that still can echo the phrases of not just you, but Dr. Kaiser. Um, I still have seniors who can stand up and say five twelve, five five twelve, and all <laughs> yeah. of that. So that helped us, didn't it? <laughs> so uh, for those of you, of you not familiar with Scott, Scott is an, is an evangelist traveling around the country, um, podcaster as well, enjoying the journey, which is just a great podcast. I mean, it's not as good as this one, but um, cool. it, it's of course it's it's great. No. It, it really is a blessing. Um, we were just talking. I was in the hospital a little bit um, just a couple of weeks ago, and uh, that was one of the podcasts I listened to daily uh, while sitting there. So you were a blessing to me. Um, without Thank you. God. So I appreciate that. Uh, you've, you've, you've been an assistant pastor. You've been a Bible teacher. You've been a college administrator. So uh, you've done it all. Um, and, you again, I, I, I'm just thankful for your ministry and the resources that you've been you've been putting out. We've talked about some of your previous books in the past. Uh, but today we're going to be talking about your latest book, uh, The Lord Was With Joseph. And so obviously we're talking about the life of Joseph. You're, you're right back into Genesis. And, uh, you know, I love the way you start off this book because you basically start with the gospel. And um, right at the beginning, uh, I'd like you to unpack this. This is not merely a book about Joseph, but about the Lord who was with Joseph. That's exactly right. You know, I think one of the great things, when you study the characters of the Bible, it does make the Bible come alive. And you begin connecting with these characters. Um, Back in history, far off places, different cultures, but you you start uh, realizing some things never change. and, And they start resonating with you. I think the only danger in that, though, is sometimes we can get acquainted with the characters of the Bible and miss the God of the Bible. And so when you study someone like Joseph, the great thing about Joseph was not Joseph. The great thing about Joseph was the Lord. And and Joseph would be the first person to tell you that. And so my, my prayer and goal in this study was that people would certainly get acquainted with the life of Joseph, that they would see themselves in Joseph and be able to make application from his life to their own. But ultimately that they would come to know the Lord and to, to learn to live every day consciously in the presence of God. And I think that's really important that you start the book off that way. Cause I think we, we tend, I think human beings in general tend to be idol worshipers and hero worshipers. We all have heroes, good and bad, whether it's a, rock star or an athlete or in our Christian circles, it's easy uh, to pick out Bible characters. I like this guy. I like this guy. Identify this guy. Um, Or even different pastors, theologians, uh, most missionaries. And, you know, I grew up on reading awesome biographies of great men, but all of these men, if they were indeed great, their whole point of their entire life and ministry was to point you somewhere else. That was the point you to the world. And well, you know, go ahead. I think one of the things that's really important to remember is some someone uh, long ago said the best men are men at best. Yeah. Uh, the Lord said it much better. The exact middle verse of our English Bible, interestingly enough, says it's better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. Yeah. And the next verse says it is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. Mm. Well, why would he repeat himself and then say, princess, theoretically, this obviously is not always true, but theoretically, the leaders were supposed to be the best men. And so the whole point was that if you start putting your confidence in man, you'll always be disappointed. But when you learn to live by faith in God, uh, that 
that is something that you can build your whole life on. And one of the things that struck me uh, from the life of Joe's well, many things. One was he's one of the few Bible characters that nothing evil is said of him. Right. You know, Daniel being another one. Um, and I would hastily say that is not because he was perfect because right. we know he's, um, but the Holy spirit chose not to emphasize that part of his life because the great part of his life, the thing he was most known for was the presence of God yeah. and obviously no sin and no unholiness in the Lord. But I, I think it is important to remember that even in the most exemplary people, the goal is not to mimic them, right. their experience. It's to learn to follow the Lord. Let's talk about that. What does it mean to have the presence of the Lord? Because uh, we both believe that God is omnipresent. He is in all places, right. uh, completely at all times. So in, in one sense, God is always with us. Uh, David himself said, even in she- the depths of Sheol, that he is with us. Um, right. he's, he knows when I wake up, when I sit down. But this is a little different. It's one thing to, to acknowledge that God is here. But it's another thing to say that his presence is here it has a different connotation okay so the first thing i think you have to to understand is that there theologically was a difference between the way the lord dealt with people in the old testament and the way he dealt with people in the new testament right the study is out of the old testament scripture uh, i'm trying to help people understand that the jehovah of the old testament is synonymous with the jesus of the new testament right the distinction there is that the Lord was with people. Uh, as a matter of fact, recently I, I preached a revival meeting on this phrase, the Lord was with him, not from Joseph's life, but from all the other Bible characters. Mm-hmm. So it says the Lord was with Abraham. He was with Isaac. He was with Jacob. He was with Joseph. He was with Moses. He was with Joshua. On and on it goes. But the presence of God in the Old Testament uh, in people's lives could be given and it could be withheld. Right. Saul is an example of that. Right. When you come New Testament and praise God, we're New Testament believers. Um, the, the mystery of the gospel is that Christ is not only with us, he is in us. Right. And he doesn't move in and out. Um, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Right. Uh, lo, I am with you all way, even to the end of the world. Amen. So I think it's important to understand what you just said. And that is we're not suggesting or implying that the Lord comes and leaves. Um, we acknowledge his presence everywhere, and we certainly acknowledge his presence in the life of every believer. The emphasis, though, here and the application of our lives is that it is possible to be a Christian living in God's world, surrounded by God's work, and even indwelt by God's Holy Spirit, but so distracted, yes. so with this world and with ourselves and others, that we miss the joy and the abundance Right. of consciously in God's presence. Right. And, uh, and I really believe, you know, learning to live every day in the presence of God, um, acknowledging him, worshiping him, enjoying him, depending on him, um, that that is the secret to every other blessing in life. As a matter of fact, when you study Joseph's life, there's a divine order that the phrase is found four times in Genesis 39. The Lord is with Joseph. Uh, the Lord is with him. In each of those instances, if you look at the verses, the Bible says immediately after that, and he was a prosperous man. And the Lord made everything he did to prosper. And the Lord prospered that which was in his hand. The funny thing is, we want to jump to the second part of that without knowing the first part. Yeah. But everybody wants the prosperity of the Lord, the blessing of God on what they're doing, their family, their life. But we're missing something. We're missing the open secret of the Bible, which is learning to live every day in God's presence. You know, I've, I'm getting older and join the club (laughs) and, uh, you know, the beard's getting a little grayer now. And, uh, to the point where people didn't realize I had a different color. Um, (laughs) but as, as we, as, as we get older, uh, death is one of the things that we, we deal with. And I've countless times I've, I've sat with people who said, you know, I miss so-and-so. I miss so-and-so. Um, I miss being in their presence. And I wish while I was with them, I had learned to cultivate that more. I wish I had learned to take advantage of that more, to develop that. Yeah. And I see that 
within the body of Christ, if we knew, again, the good news of the gospel is that Christ does never, he never leaves us. But if we knew what we had, our entire life would be changed. If we knew what we had in Christ, with the indwelling of the spirit and with, with Christ's promises, with the gospel, if we understood the relationship that we could have, our whole lives could be transformed. Amen to that. Well, you think about Joseph. He only lived with his daddy who loved him and gave him the coat of many colors. That's what everybody knows about Joseph. You know, he only lived with him for 17 years. And then suddenly that, that whole wonderful way of life was disrupted. He's hundreds of miles away from everything that's familiar. He's in a strange land. Then he's facing extreme opposition, but the constant in his life was the presence of God. Right. And, um, and really, Kevin, I would even say um, that this is the great message of the Bible. Yeah. This is not the message of Joseph. So, for example, if you go all the way back to the beginning in Genesis, what made Eden Eden? It was the presence of God. Right. What was so tragic about sin? Adam and Eve hid themselves from the presence of the Lord. Cain went out from the presence of the Lord. Um, so that was disrupted. How does the Bible end? Well, in Revelation, uh, God himself shall be with them and be their God. Where are we going someday? Praise God. We're going in as the Lord forever. So I think between the disruption of Genesis and the fall and the eventual victory where we enter God's presence forever, what all of us are learning is how to live every day in God's presence. And this is, this is what is so thrilling. We don't have to wait till we die or the rapture takes right. play right. to enjoy the presence of God. Isn't that great? Yeah. You know, what, what I love about the story of Joseph is that it, it destroys any type of prosperity gospel. Because right. the reality is um, Joseph struggles. Joseph, and we're going to talk about that in a minute. Joseph goes through some horrible experiences. But what the, what the, the prosperity gospel teaches, you know, you name it and claim it. You, you get what you want. If you just have enough faith, if you just pray enough, God will give you riches, he'll give you cars, he'll give you houses, he'll give you prosperity. But this, the prosperity gospel robs us of our true prosperity. It yeah. robs us. It, it, it focuses us on this earth, the here and now. Um, but even greater than that, it robs us of that relationship with God. That, that you're talking about here. And so Joseph learns that <laughs> whether it's in the midst of a pit, a prison cell, or the glories of, of uh, being second in command of Egypt, it's that relationship with God that is truly what life is about and truly gives us a, a satisfaction and a joy that mere money, cars, earthly possessions just simply can't compare to. There's no doubt about that. And I think, you know, again, we're going full circle back to where we started. Yeah. Where people get stuck is looking at man. You've got to look beyond man and behind the blessing of God in man's life and see the Lord. Because really the story of Joseph was not about Joseph's great plan. <laughs> it was, right. And you're seeing the, the sovereignty of God. You're seeing the divine purpose of God being fulfilled in his life. And I would, I would argue that one huge part of that purpose was God's timing. Yeah. I mean, about it, sitting in prison for two years. I mean, that's not the prosperity gospel. Right. That is the providence of God. He's waiting on the Lord. He's, He's quietly submitting to God's timetable. Uh, I did run across something the other day. You know, it's funny. Once you start reading, studying, digging into a life like this or into a portion of scripture, you keep finding more. So, you know, okay. the book was finished. Um, I'm discovering little nuggets and little thoughts. But I came to the end of his life. And, you know, out of the abundance of a heart, the mouth speaketh. If you look at the last things he says to his brothers in Genesis 50. Um, he goes all the way back to the promises of God from the very beginning. 
Mm. And it dawned on me, how did Joseph stay right with God all those years? How did he stay hopeful? How did he stay full of faith? How did he, how did he not just survive? How did he thrive through all of that? I really believe he was meditating on the word of God every day. And I think there's a great practical application there for all of us that meditation in scripture is the thing that helps you when you're, when you're down in Egypt, when you're down in the pit, when you're down in the prison, yeah. it, it's word that, that sustains you. Well, when I think about the life of Joseph, the main thing that sticks out is God's sovereignty, of course. But, and you mentioned this in the book, and I think this is just, just even this chapter alone is, is worth the price of, of the book. And of course, you know, the, the uh, Kindle version is free. But um, talking about the past, people get stuck in the past. And we live in a day and age where that's a big thing. Whether we're talking about cancel culture or we're talking about um, people who've had abuse and trauma in the past. Uh, everyone's talking about that today. Um, but the story of Joseph is not, and, and again, it's one of the things I love about the book. It's not just a testimony to Joseph. He, he pulled himself up by his own bootstraps. Uh, and, and Joseph was resilient, and he was dedicated. He, well, no, again, it, this is God's will for him to go through these very difficult times in order uh, to bring about his will. And, and God was with him in all of those things. That's right. So what advice do you have to people who are struggling with their past? They're, oh, I can't believe, I, you know, maybe I had abusive parents. And these things are real, and I don't want to downplay them at, in any right. way. But how does the life of Joseph help us come to grips with all of that? Well, what what helped me? Uh, you know, it's not enough to look at somebody and say, "Get past your past, get over right. it, move on." Right. Uh, that that doesn't help people. Uh, and there are people listening right now who've had terrible things done to them, or said about them, or experiences, or things they never would have chosen for themselves. And we all want to ask, "Why? Why? Why?" What Joseph does, it helps you step back, look at your past and say, how could God be using this in my life today to shape me into the person he desires for me to be? See, everybody wants to ride in Pharaoh's chariot. Right. You know, everybody wants to be prime minister of Egypt. (laughs) So um, few people see all the stops and steps along the journey. Yeah. Uh, that it took to get Joseph there. And so uh, that's the first section of the book. There are four sections. Um, and this just, I think, a natural progression yeah. uh, to Joseph. But it begins with seeing God in your past. Can you see the Lord at work in the twists and turns of your journey? Right. The, the second is remembering the Lord in your temptations. That's where he was yeah. conscious of presence in, in Potiphar's house. The third is serving the Lord in your difficulty. So even when you're doing right, serving God doesn't mean it's going to be easy. It's going to be opposition. And then the fourth is trusting God for your future. Okay. So if you look at the, like the bookends on his life, you got his past and his future. Yeah. Um, I've come to, to observe in my own life and the lives of other people, young people tend to live in the future. Old people tend to live in the past. Right. So the older you get, the more you're living on memories, good or bad, of yesteryear. And young people sometimes have this idealism that somewhere out there in the future it's going to get better. <laughs> and I think I think one of the dangers is we all miss today. We all miss the present. Yeah. And one of the things I hope people will take away from this study is realization that the only way to make today count is you've got to be able to look back and believe God has been at work to this point to bring you to this moment. Right. And you've got to look ahead and believe that the God who has cared for you to this moment is not going to stop now. Right. He's in your future. He's got your future in his hand. And if you can rest in that, in, in the God who is neither past tense nor future tense, the great I am, the present tense God, the eternal God, then you can enjoy today right. and you can serve today and you can live today conscious that the Lord is with you. You know, one of the things you also mentioned in that chapter that always stands out to me and I, and I love it is uh, you talked about past, you talked about uh, the circumstances even around your birth, but when you were born is also important. In other words, 
God puts you in a place at a particular time. Yes. Um, one of my one of my mem- my fond memories at Crown College, uh, the year that I was there, was Bible conference. And uh, during that week, there there were two messages that I I still go back to today. One of them was from uh, Bobby Robertson, who, who's now with the Lord, and uh, talked about a message about not quitting. And I, 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 I can still vividly remember. That. Yes. But the other message that stands out was from I believe it's Pastor uh, Mike Edwards. I think he's in Virginia. Yes. And uh, from the book of book of Acts, went to Stephen's uh, sermon there. And talked about David being a servant of his generation. Mm-hmm. And I remember him going through the litany of, oh, how bad it is today. This is what I, and he talked about some of the previous generations he would love to have been a part of the old West and some other things. And, and he's going through all this horrible stuff of, and you know, we can make a worse list now. Um, and then he stopped and said, but you know what? This is the generation God put me. Amen. This is, this is where my ministry is. God wanted me to be here. And uh, that's that's really you mentioned that here in the book. That's really important. It is that God doesn't want us living in yesteryear, uh, back in the whether it's the 1950s or uh, the 1600s or the 1776 or whatever. God has us here in the midst of this wicked and perverse generation. God has intended us sovereignly to be where we are. So let's be where we are. Well, this is one thing I've been challenging older people with recently. When I say older, I'm including myself in that. You know, people who have well, children with that yet, who have grandchildren, but <laughs> we're, we're not kids anymore. And I've, I've said to them in many places recently, look, stop talking to a young generation about how bad it is, right. and things like, "I'm glad I'm not a young person today." Boy, I wouldn't want to grow up in this culture, right? Because what you're doing, you're speaking in unbelief. Yeah. God, in his perfect providence, chose this time for us to be alive. And I think what we've got to do, we've got to turn it around. Let's, let's live saying it's a privilege that God would let us live near the end of the story. Right. That God would choose to allow us to be a part of his work in this world near the end of the church age. I think that's thrilling. And we're going to be pretty embarrassed when we when we are at the judgment seat of Christ, standing next to martyrs, right, uh, thinking about how we wind our way to the rapture, and talked about what a tough time we were having. I was serving under a pastor who lived in Rockford, Illinois, who he was talking in one church service about. I, actually, I think it was a a church leader meeting. Anyway, uh, we talked about how how bad things were. Look at the crime. Look at all of this stuff. He said, "There is no better place on earth to have a ministry." <laughs> You know, just turning that whole situation around. And I think, what if we had that same perspective? Exactly so right. What better way to see God work than in the backdrop of all of this darkness and the backdrop of all of this sin? Isn't it great to see the hand of God at work in the life of teenagers in this time and in this place? Exactly. I mean, you and I both work with teenagers. You're, I know you're at a, I believe we're at a youth camp right now, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. I'm speaking at a youth retreat this week, yeah. yes. And so you've seen it, and I've seen, you know, I work with teenagers, and God still works. The same God that blessed Joseph, the same God that blessed uh, famous preachers, whether it's Billy Sunday or D.L. Moody, whatever, is, is still working today. And and I can see God at work in, in, in these students. I can see them in chapel. I can see the word doing its work. Nothing inhibits. You know, we talk about revival. Well, the only, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, I believe the only necessity for revival is that we have a bad situation. <laughs> As a general rule, historically, that's when the real spiritual awakenings have come. Right. That's really when you get to the end of yourself. That's when people get desperate for God and realize only the Lord. And really, that's where Joseph was. I mean, honestly, he was at the end of it. He had no no hope. As a matter of fact, to be a slave in Egypt was a lifelong status. So once you're a slave, you're always a slave. Um, well, once he was thrown in prison, that was the end of that. Right. And yet, look at the rest of the story. Yeah. Only God can do that. Yeah. And I think we've got to read and study the word of God. Uh, see the Lord at work in these desperate times. 
and allow that then to give us fresh faith and, and fresh hope for the situation we're in at this moment. And the Lord is with Joseph. Praise God, the Lord's with us. And that's the note we've got to end on. Uh, as we're, we're wrapping up here as time is going away. But uh, this book really is, it, it's a short book, but it's, it's a powerful book, I believe. And uh, it's a practical book. One of the things I appreciate about this is this can be used in a small group. This could be used in a personal study. It's not just, this isn't an academic look at the life of Joseph. We're not getting into deep theology, but we are getting into the, the most important essence of theology, and that's the study of, of, of God. And so at the end of each chapter, or just about each chapter, you have action sections, action steps. You've got questions to, to consider and to mull over. You've got work to do. You're giving out homework. That's right. We're giving homework. <laughs> But it's a good kind of homework. It's yeah. the kind that, that helps you practice the presence of God. So that's what we're trying to accomplish. Right. So um, this is a very practical book. And it's a book that I, I believe if, if you read it with an open mind um, that God can use to to draw you closer to him. And so, Scott, thank you for, for not just your time here today, but just for your your labor in the ministry and in pointing people to Christ. Well, I appreciate that. And I. I do hope folks will get the book. Um, we've made it available. We've made a decision early on that all of the full length books we were going to make available in digital format for free. And the goal of that was to make it accessible to everyone anywhere in the world. So they can go to uh, Apple uh, books or they can go to Kindle uh, and download the Lord is with Joseph. And if folks would be kind enough to leave us a, a review and recommendation uh, wherever they download it, we'd appreciate it. That'll help us get it to other people on those platforms. Uh, the audio book uh, is getting ready to be released, and that'll be available on Apple and also on Audible. Some people like to listen to it. Right. And then there's people like me that are caught between generations that still like the book yeah. in their hand. Yeah. So uh, that hardback book, uh, folks can pre-order now. It'll be available very soon. If they just go to enjoyingthejourney.org, uh, they can go to forward slash Joseph if they want to, to go straight to it. But even there on the homepage, they can find the link to the Joseph section, enjoyingthejourney.org. And at that website, you can also see uh, different blog posts that you've written, your podcast, the Enjoying the Journey podcast, which I highly recommend. And uh, you have also a lot of other resources on there uh, that people could uh, could access. Yeah, we, we really are trying to provide a library of some things folks can use to get in, into the Word of God. And, uh, even with this series, uh, we've, we've made graphics available so folks can use them in their church and Sunday schools, Bible study groups. Um, we'll have um, student handouts there shortly and so anything we can do to try to to try to further this message that's that's all we're trying to accomplish well again scott thank you for joining us and thank all of you for joining us uh go ahead and check us out at www.basicbiblepodcast.org and i'll make sure the links are there so that you can access that and i hope you will so until next week have a good rest of your oh no uh, i was gonna get Ray's going to get mad if I don't remember. Uh, check us out on Facebook and all the social medias. We're all there. The Facebook group, join our conversation there. On, also on Twitter and, and Instagram. You can find that all at on our website. So until next week, have a good rest of your week.